Okay, so today I wanted to give you uh, a little tour of our bus. I will say that right now we're in my hometown in Massachusetts for the holidays. Um, we've been here for a few weeks and we're just getting ready to get back on the road. So we've packed a lot of stuff in here. It doesn't have everything that we normally have, um, but a lot of it is in there. You can see how we organize it and how we set up the interior. So before we get started, um, just a little background. Pearl is actually our second bus. We started restoration on our first bus named June uh, back in 2014. And then when that restoration, we knew it wasn't going to work out. Um, it was a bus that was not in great shape and we were putting a lot of work into it. Um, we actually decided to then sell June and get a fully restored bus. Um, so this bus came from California, uh, V-Dub Classics out in California and they did a full restoration, including a mechanical restoration, and also built out the custom interior. All right, let's get started. So we'll start up here in what we like to call the cockpit. We spend a lot of time up here when we're traveling long days. One thing that I really like about this front space is this rubber floor. So this is pretty standard in Volkswagen bus, but it's a great place to throw like muddy shoes or any dirty items that you don't want back in the main living space. And then this is actually one of my most favorite parts of the bus. This is a center console that was built for us by one of our friends. So it just has two drawers here and then a little flip up top that you can access the first drawer from. So in here, we just keep things that we reach for all the time. So this is like pens and pencils in here. There's some keys. This is an electric hand warmer. Um, I live for this thing. I'm a very cold person and it really comes in handy. Um, shea butter, you can literally never have enough of that in the winter. Headlamps, flashlights. This is just a little sack of quarters for laundry, um, parking or things like that. And then these cup holders, we actually already had. We had them for our cooler uh, and they happen to fit just perfectly right here. And then in the bottom drawer, we keep some bathroom essentials. So we have a little trowel to dig a cat hole. And this is my shiwi. I actually haven't used shiwi yet, um, but no doubt I will. And then the other storage space we have up front is just a standard glove box. Um, in here, these are tools that Murphy needs often to make some adjustments or fix the bus. We just keep those in here. This is more tools uh, and just a little journal. So I'll give you a peek inside the cabinets. Um, before I open it up, one of my favorite things about this design are these flush knobs. So it's nice because they're tucked out of the way so things don't catch on them. And then when you need to open it, it's just a little push and it opens up. So in here is the majority of our storage for cooking utensils and we also have a little bit of food in here. Like I said, we're not fully moved back in yet after being home for the holidays, so uh, there will be more food in here. Over here we have our plates and bowls. I really love these. They're wooden, uh, they're really lightweight and they don't like crash around when you're driving, so <laughs> the risk of bre breakage, breakage is pretty minimal. And then down here we have some thermoses in the corner. Back here is where we store our glasses and teacups. I actually really love this bag. I begged the people at Whole Foods to give it to me. It's one of their wine storage bags. It has dividers in it so that the glasses don't clack together. Clack? Is that a word? I don't know. Anyways. And then we have our 
MSR stove. So we have two stoves in the bus. We have this MSR stove and we also have a bigger jet boil stove. So we'll use the MSR stove for small things. If we want to just boil some water in the morning or cook something really quickly, we'll use the MSR stove with these nesting pots. If we're going to cook like a more elaborate dinner, we'll use the jet boil. And then over this side, we have food storage. So just this little pull out. Originally, we didn't have this Rubbermaid container in here. It, the, we kind of just shoved all the food in the in the cabinet and that didn't really work very well. It was just like kind of a cluster. Uh, so more if you put this in here and it works much better, you can just kind of pull it out and back in. And then we have our most important kitchen appliance, which is the Vitamix blender. This was a vital part to moving into the bus. It had to come with me. I refused to leave it behind. And we actually ended up designing our entire solar around being able to run this. And then we just have one drawer in the bus. It sits right below the water. It has a nice firm closure. It kind of feels like it goes like clicks in. So it, sometimes it opens when we're driving, but usually not. You gotta give it a little pull out. And this is where we keep just all of our utensils, knives, scissors, rubber bands. Um, these are really great. They're little wraps for food and things like that. So a nice deep drawer, lots of storage space. And then up here, this is our produce bowl. It's like a flexible, like almost a denim feeling fabric, uh, which I really like because it doesn't tend to slide around while we're driving and it also can hold a bunch of stuff. So I've had as many as like a dozen apples in here with a bunch of other stuff. Um, so it's good at containing things while you're driving around. And then our last food storage cabinet is this narrow cabinet. So this looks like it is tiny and doesn't hold a lot, but it holds a surprising amount. It's where we keep basically all of our jarred foods and spices. So this just flips up. You give this a little click down and then it has two shelves on the top. So we'll keep spices on the top shelf and then jarred foods, just some nuts and quinoa. And then this is just magnetic. So you give it a little push and it opens. Oops and it opens and then just some more jarred foods down here again typically we'll have a lot more we tend to stack this one too high as just i started to stack some stuff too high um but we'll stack two rows in here um so ton of storage here and then this top actually provides a little bit more counter space uh, which is really really nice so for cold food storage we have our fridge that runs off the solar so this fridge is a bit small uh, and we made that decision when we were thinking about how we wanted to have the interior built out. So a lot of times the fridge or the icebox is where that narrow cabinet is in a VW bus, but we wanted a little bit more of an open feeling floor plan. Uh, so we opted to have the fridge in this main cabinet area. And then we supplement that cold storage with our Yeti. This is the smallest size Yeti, but also provides a pretty surprising amount of storage. And the best part is it keeps things cold for a really long time. So typically we'll get about five days out of our ice um, and we'll just fill the bottom with ice and then pile everything on top. Um, and it does a really good job and is a good kind of supplement to the refrigerator. In addition to the five gallons we have on the countertop, we also have this pump sink. There's three more gallons that live right underneath this countertop that you can access through this flip up lid. So this is just a manual pump sink. You pump it forward. Um, actually, I haven't done this in a while. I'm pretty sure it might be frozen. Next up, I want to show you what we like to call our bathroom. We don't have a literal bathroom on board, but uh, it is where we keep all of our toiletries and shower things. So it's right back here behind the sink in this little flip up cabinet. And this is where we just like to keep all of our towels, toiletries, cleaning supplies. This is an invaluable cleaning supply. It's actually made by another van lifer, the Rolling Home. 
The bus is constantly dirty. We're always tracking dirt in and out. I sweep it out probably at least once a day. So this is like the best little sweeper. You can grab it, it sweeps everything out. It does a really good job of cleaning up um, and doesn't take up a lot of space. Back here is where we just keep all of our cords, um, USB cables, all that kind of thing. We kind of keep this out and about just because we're in and out of it so often. I'm super good at undoing this with one hand. So it's going well. Can do it. Where we keep all of our headphones in here and then just some cords and things. So one of the best features of the bus is the pop top. So as you can see, I'm standing all the way up I can put my arms all the way up. I'm not even touching the ceiling yet. Well, you can't see that, but you get the idea. So it provides a lot of good airflow when it's warm in here. Extra headroom is always great. It's great when you're trying to cook if you want to like be chopping something. Um, it's nice to be able to stand straight up and not have to like kneel down on the ground. And then all of these zipper open into screens. So it gives you a lot of good extra lights and stargazing at night when it's warm. So another nice benefit of the pop top is you get some extra storage space. So I'll just turn you around here. So even when the top is down, there's a few inches of storage right here. So right now we have our reflectix for the windows here. And then we also have these little like, I guess the proper name would be magnetic clip. We just got these. We found that in our first few months in the bus, something is constantly wet. Uh, so usually like a wet towel or our towels after we shower um, or after cooking or whatever, we're constantly just hanging things up all over the bus for them to dry. So we got those little magnetic clips. Hopefully that will help. And then on the other side of the pop top, we just keep our yoga mats. We both have the Manduka Echo Light Travel. Um, so they're super thin, but still really grippy and you can fold them up and stick them right in the extra storage on top. Welcome to the bedroom. It's really just the living room and kitchen, but I'll talk about the bed. The bed is actually one of my least favorite things about the bus. A lot of custom van builds will have a bed that kind of stays out all the time, which is more of a luxury than you think. Kind of the last thing you want to do after like finding a place to park and sleep is then have to construct your whole bed. Um, so it is pretty easy and we've tried to kind of design a, a system of our sheets and comforter to make it as easy as possible. Um, but I do like the versatility of it that we have both kind of like a bench to sit on or a seat to sit on and a bed. <coughs> I think I just swallowed a bug. <coughs> That's not vegan. So to put the bed down, we just move these pillows and put them right down on the floor. And then there's little handles underneath. You just give it a lift up and a pull out. And it's now a bed. Okay, there's the bed. So as you can see, it's kind of a tight fit for two. The pillows just barely sit next to each other, um, but it's cozy, we like it. I'm like kind of out of breath from making the bed. I was like kind of wrap. And that's it, bed's made back up. So I do fold the fitted sheet kind of around the comforter and the pillows. There tends to be quite a bit of condensation in here when we sleep, especially when it's cold. So the insides of the windows might be a little bit wet in the morning. So I try and cocoon the comforter and the pillows in the fitted sheet just to try and reduce things that are wet. And then on top of that, we keep our Reflectix. Um, so this one is for the front windshield. And then these two are the two that we use every single night. Um, so they're just custom cut Reflectix with magnets in them that we can just like put right on the window. So that gets thrown right back. Yeah, just like that. Super, just throw, just throw them right like that. That was, that was good, Rebecca. Okay. 
So our clothes storage, what we like to call our closet, is underneath the bed. So you just give this a little flip up. You hear that click and then it'll stay. So we use packing cubes for our clothes storage. We both have six plus a shoe packing cube. Um, we use the Eagle Creek packing cubes. So mine are the black packing cubes and the blue are Murphy's packing cubes. So we try and keep the zippers on top so that we don't have to pull the entire large packing cube out. We can just unzip it, get whatever we need out of here, and then zip it back up. The small and mediums we keep in the back and those are kind of easy to just like reach in and pull out and get what we need. So next up, I'll show you our climbing slash storage closet, which is accessed through the back hatch. So just give that a little press and open. So originally we were going to store our clothes in this closet, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to, um, especially with our bedding back here. So we opted to put the clothing under the seat. So right now in here, we have our jet boil, a little bit of climbing gear, and our Mr. Heater Little Buddy, which is our propane heater. Typically we have a pack in here that has all of the climbing gear, so it's a bit more full, but it's not completely full because we want to leave a little bit of space because this is where we also house our inverter and all of our solar wiring. So the last bit of storage we have in the bus is this Thule bag on the roof, which we like to call our attic. We opted for the bag because we didn't actually have enough space for one of the bigger cargo carriers uh, because on the front, we mounted our 200 watt flexible solar panel. So we only had a little bit of space to work with, which is why we went for the bag. In the bag, we keep tools and parts for the bus. And because the Thule bag is only water resistant and not waterproof, we've put everything in these Sea to Summit dry sacks, which do a great job of keeping out the moisture. All right, so that's our van. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we are going to be traveling again starting in just a few days right after Christmas. So we'll be making a lot more videos of our life on the road. So stay tuned for more. Bye friends.